Seeing all that food waste in the New York Times article was really unsettling. Farmers dumped four million gallons of milk a day last week. And at the same time, you're seeing lines at food banks that are going for miles with people waiting, you know, sometimes 16 hours to only get turned away. It doesn't, it doesn't sit well with, with, with any of us. So what we did is we said, okay, let's call around and see if we can find a farm, you know, that actually has surplus eggs and see if we can con just connect, you know, one farm to one food bank. And maybe you can call it naive, but as college students, we're gonna try. In the first week, uh, we delivered 10,800 eggs and 50,000 pounds of onions. This was a food bank that I had grown up volunteering at. My parents took me there when I was five or six and we'd like sort the fruit. That feeling that we just had helping you know, our local food bank, how can we get other communities to, to feel the same way? And we called as many of our friends as we could and everyone kind of felt the same way. Hey, there's actually something here. Like, we got to get moving on this. College students starting FarmLink. FarmLink. The FarmLink project connecting farmers with food banks. Food Finders, who sponsors us, their PayPal account has frozen. Like, PayPal was like, this suspicious activity is going on. You just received, you know, thousands of donations in the last, you know, 10 minutes. Like, it's insane the amount of outpouring and support. Now we're trying to move over 250,000 pounds of food every week. We're hoping to move a million this month, which comes out to like 800,000 meals all around the country. You know, I'm the fourth generation to work this farm, and my son's at the fifth. The only situation that's similar to this is my great grandfather back. In the, when he was dealing with World War I and the Spanish flu. But calling him up and asking him for advice is not really a, a, a go-to plan, so we're kind of making it up as we go. This year, because you know schools, hotels, restaurants are all closed, those contracts have dried up for Doug, and now he is sitting on a pile of, he doesn't even know how many potatoes, like over 1.5 million potatoes that he doesn't know you know, what he is going to do with. Through the process of, you know, getting, say, potatoes to a food bank that really needs it, we can pay Doug and his farm workers so that they can plant next season. We just loaded the, this truck here with 27 totes to go to uh, a food bank in Salt Lake City. A little after one, the guys should probably be there by about five o'clock-ish. Everyone wants to contribute, and that is like an amazing feeling that, as like a young person, gives me a lot of hope you know, that in times of crisis, we can, we can get through something like this. I mean, at the end of the day, you're, you're not gonna solve this whole problem, but just because you can't do everything doesn't mean you must do nothing. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do everything we can to get as much produce as possible to these food banks that need it most.